I mean, here's the thing. The everything to do with, you know, parenting, pregnancies, babies, adoptions, separations, abortions, choices, no choice. I mean, all that stuff is very emotionally charged. Politically also, but it is emotionally charged. People have very strong opinions about the whole thing. When I was writing this, you know, I, it never once occurred to me that it was anything but the story of people who were having babies and deciding what to do with them. But that was the story. That was the fuel of the story. I yeah. It's been late, mostly, mostly, by most people, nothing. People take it for what it is. But every now and then, yes, someone will say, how come nobody in your movie has an abortion? Uh, yeah, my best answer is uh, because it's not the abortion movie, it's the adoption movie. And, and, and there might be a movie that's also the abortion and the adoption, but you know what, I just, I just uh, you know, when I was writing it, I, it's, you know, I've, I've written other movies where, where people have abortions. Um, uh, I, have, I have no answer except, uh, when I was writing it, no, I never took that into account. I followed the story that came out of me. Uh, you know, people ask me, and uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's. Uh, I try not to feel uh, uncomfortable. Well, I have to say one thing that was wonderful about the movie: you certainly don't glorify childbirth. It's a difficult process, and you don't glorify the early days of having a newborn. Well, so that's, I thought that was. Yeah, and you know what, the mother, baby, brother, siblings, spouses, all that stuff is complicated, period. You know, if there are other elements involved, you know, like, uh, you know, a mom who didn't go through the, even the nine-month process of, you know, getting ready for her baby, the baby's just handed to her like it is to Lucy, you know, it's, it's the rude awakening. You don't sleep again. <laughs> I mean, we just both agreed that Karen was not someone who was actively in the market. I mean, there must have been men along the way, you know, she's 50. Um, but, but the dates had probably become further and far between and, and, um, and that she's probably someone who didn't wear makeup and some days she was, looked a little better at work, some days not. Um, you know, and then the onslaught of production came on. And I, remember, I do remember the first day or two thinking, oh, she's really going for this, okay. Uh, and then you forget, you know, the wave rolls over you. And, and one of the things you do when you're directing, of course, you're trying to figure out where you are in the story, especially here. You know, you shoot, in the, you go into the kitchen and you shoot all the scenes before the mother dies, after the mother dies, when they're kids, when they're old, the party, the funeral. You know, it's like, oh. Um, and I, I thought, okay, we're on track. But I was never really, you know, as aware of how finely tuned Annette had done that journey of looking really disheveled and really boldly, you know, really just going for it. I mean, that scene where she's been crying after she finds out the mother's pendant, she opens the door for him on the date. <laughs> Even Jimmy reacts like, am I early? Because <laughs> you look, you know, it's a hurricane landed here. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, she did a remarkable job of taking her, starting her way deep in the hole. And in the end, without much, she looks beautiful.